Hello, everybody. It is Tuesday, and this is Chatting with Chap, and I'm your host, Ginger Wade. And today, I've got my sister-in-law with me, Tanil. And you will see right behind me, kind of on my shoulder, <laughs> is the bonfire pit where yesterday my brother roasted ham and beef, and it was excellent. It was very good. So we had our Independence Day celebration yesterday, so this is the day after relaxing in the yard. And we're coming with you to, to you today just to talk a little bit about homeschooling and work. So um, the, lots of you have asked this question. Can I homeschool if I'm working full time? I've got to work. What do I do? How do I handle homeschooling? And Tanil and Jeremy have a really interesting history of this. So we're going to just kind of talk through all the different things that they've been through. Um, and before I have Tanil tell a little bit about herself, I'm going to apologize for any booming you hear because <laughs> we live, Tanil lives really close to the Pamira Gunning Club. <laughs> so we hear There's shooting going on. Shooting, because it's the 4th of July <laughs> and we must celebrate. <laughs> so anyway, so Tanil, tell us a little bit about, you know, your family and who you are. And all so that I'm married to Jeremy for 20 years. <laughs> 20. Um, and we have four kids. Um, he he has a daughter who's older, and then we have three boys together. Um, we've homeschooled for 13 years, um, and I've worked through it all, in full time, part time, <laughs> all the, the mixes. different yeah. mixes. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's kind of we've graduated to the two oldest, and we have to in high school coming up this year so yeah so it's been very interesting like way back in the day when I got started Joel was I think in kindergarten um, Jeremy was at home and Tanil was working full-time right he, full yeah he worked part-time part -time. in the evenings okay and I was full-time yeah with small children two small yeah. children and pregnant with a third <sighs> it was crazy so it was crazy time and um, my kids went to a, a thing at a church where they kind of got some interaction with other kids. This is a preschool thing. And um, so her, her oldest son, Elijah, would come over and go to that um, with Asher. And I would be homeschooling Joel. Well, and Jeremy would stop in before he went to work. So there were times when Joel really struggled with some math. And Jeremy doesn't think like me. Oh, <gasps> shocker. So um, he would help. He would even help Joel with his math. He likes number lines. Jeremy does. Yes. Number lines is yes is his thing, and that's how you do math. So there's a hint for the day if you're struggling with math, try a number line. <laughs> so anyway, so it started that early, um, just I don't know, dipping your feet in the pool. But when when did you guys decide that you definitely wanted to homeschool? Was there a time when you thought you wouldn't, or the, the desire was there, but the logistics were always like. Are we going to be able to? I don't know. You know, once, once the um, once you become a mother, you know that that whole attachment to your kids. You know, the bonding is there, mm -hmm. and um, the when especially when you got to be four and you're looking at kindergarten yeah. soon, and you're like, yeah. no one loves my kids the way I do. Mm -hmm. I don't want to send them mm -hmm. away to a stranger. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so that kind of kicked in. Um, and then when we. Well, Jeremy got a new job offer, so he had to go full time to accept the job. So we had about six months where we were both working full time. Oh, yes. Ginger helped watch the yes. two while I was pregnant, and then once the third one was born, I went part time. And then I, you know, we didn't rely on that yeah. so much anymore. But yeah. Grandma helped out watching the kids, and then as the oldest one turned five, I'm like, okay, I'm part time. Let's. Let's try this homeschooling thing. Um, and you were still going to go to the office then at that time. I went you to the weren't working at home at I all. went to the office three days a week. Yeah. I was working three days a week. Yeah. I had Monday and Friday off. And my mom was loved her grandkids. And she was like, I, she was able to keep them mm -hmm. with her mm -hmm. for three days a week. And we we paid her um, for you know, the food and, mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, it wasn't a ton of money, but it was, yeah, yeah. it was, yeah. you know, but yeah. And she was happy to have them in her house and, you know, starting with one in kindergarten, she was like, that's not bad. We can do yeah. this. Yeah. 
That's what you always do. Just start. <laughs> just start. Yeah, just right? Start. Yep. So, and my mom lived near my workplace. That so, was, yeah, that was I handy. commuted with the children, dropped them off with grandma. But you did a lot of early could, mornings, right? Weren't you guys out in the car early? We were, yeah. Well, I think we were leaving the house by 5.30, which is hard to get I kids. I remember that. Like, small Up and kids. moving. Yeah. You know, the baby got put in the carrier and like, just don't wake up. <laughs> yeah, right. Please. <laughs> Stay asleep. Um, so, um, and then I could go visit them at lunchtime too. And like, if my mom had questions, like, I don't understand what this lesson was. <laughs> yeah. Like, I can help me. <laughs> Try and get her, you know, I'm like, all right. And, you know, I had a work desk, so she would call every once in yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah. But like, you, so they took books back and forth, right? There were book yes, bags that went back we and have, forth. and Through the years, yeah, we've had book bags, you know. And then we got crates because the books got bigger and heavier. <laughs> heavier. <laughs> so the, the boys had to load their crates up the night before and get them in the car for the next morning to go to Grandma's. Um, so the traveling homeschool. <laughs> yeah, but it became your routine. Yeah. They were very yes. used to it because they were, I, I mean, I, Abram... Wouldn't have known anything else than right. Yeah, he was the he baby, was the right? Baby. So I always go to Gammy's three times a week, and right. <laughs> and then um, as you know, work started offering some work from home. Oh yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I like so my job out of college was through the Navy, a civilian, working on their computer systems, and then um, when I approach them I'm like can I work part-time and they approved that um, I worked three nine-hour days so 27 hours yeah that's right you had flexibility there um, mm -hmm. and then they offered some work from home opportunities um, I don't know maybe my oldest was in fifth grade or something at that point so I, I took them up on that and kind of shifted my schedule and then I worked uh, Monday morning from home so I'd have the afternoon. We had Tuesdays off, so we could go to a co-op. Mm -hmm. yeah. I worked in the office Wednesday and Thursday, eight hours then. And Grandma took them for two days then. And then Friday morning, I worked from home and I had Friday afternoon off. So, mm -hmm. um, and my husband's working full time at this point time. now. So, um, that that. That gave us a little more flexibility with me being able to be at home um, and keeping them at home. So they only had to get commute two days a week. Yeah. Then. Yeah. But I think the commute actually was good for them because it instilled like some some promptness. Oh, yes. The, yes. Life skills. The, um, <laughs> yeah, you can't lay in bed when you have to get to work. <laughs> yeah, get up. <laughs> I have to get to work, which means you have to get out of bed. <laughs> Um, so they're, they're actually pretty good about when we need to get moving in the morning, yeah. they get moving. That's good. Um, it's good. I know some parents who, sh who say their kids struggle with that <laughs> as homeschoolers. Yes. Yeah. So, but through that, um, like grandma was helping, like she would teach two days, like you said, she would yeah, guide them through two days of work. She'd pick up the lessons where we left off the day before we came and... And the kids, you know, the kids know their routine then, too, after a few weeks of starting every year. So they know, well, I finished this, so i got to move on to the next mm -hmm. lesson. When was it, do you remember, if you remember, that some of them started to get a little more independent and it was a little less of grandma or you being in there all the time? Do, do you think, what, do you remember an age? I was just wondering if with your schedule, if they kind of learned that independence a little sooner or? Well, I would say at least at grandma's house because grandma spoils kids. <laughs> yeah, there's that. I know she had to, to drag them to the school table at times. <laughs> but, but Gammy. <laughs> um like a certain age isn't really sticking in into my mind okay. but it does so my middle son was probably woke up to the fact that if I get my schoolwork done early mm. then I have yes. the rest of the day ah. whereas the other two are slower and shrug their feet and still do I'm like so um personality yeah that's a, definitely a personality thing but definitely I would say 
definitely by sixth grade, they were, you know, you know what you need to do. If you don't understand it, then come seek help, right? I'm working from home. Just give me like a flag so I know when I need to take a break, I need to come see yeah, you yeah, about yeah. it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's kind of how it works. But, you know, and just because that's how we worked, and we did work it through Monday through Friday, but that doesn't mean you can't, you know, like, all right, we're not doing school on Monday. It just yeah. doesn't work for us. I'm going to go work, and we're going to do school on Saturday. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or evenings, evenings. Or, you know, there's many different ways to, to schedule yeah. um, your homeschool. Yeah. And you're, I mean, it's not like you're doing it all day long especially when they're little you really get it done i mean an, an hour, hour or and two yeah, yeah an hour two or two hours. so it's a it's, simple math lesson yeah read a little bit out of a like a science book yeah learn do some writing exercises when yeah. they're small yeah some um some stories some good fun stories so if you have little little people in your house and you have to work goodness like you said you can do it in the evening saturday sunday you know just taking a little bit of time and yeah bedtime story and, times just make it long <laughs> make yeah. bedtime story well, long <laughs> and look for people who are going to support you so oh, that's true grandparents too sisters-in-laws or sisters <laughs> you know maybe they're not doing the homeschooling but they're watching the small kids for mm -hmm. you um you know even get connected with the homeschool groups because people you know they can take your kids for a day maybe for you so you can work and support help support the family and or trade like, right trade yeah time. trade trade time uh, you know i can supervise your kids while you monday you can supervise my yeah. kids tuesday um yeah you know, people are willing to help, but you got to be willing to ask. Ask. Um, yeah. So, and then as far as actual, the actual work, you know, if you had a previous career, maybe you can go back to a part-time mm -hmm. and find someone to hire you. Or like, so my mom, even though she helped us homeschool, she worked part-time as well with the American mm -hmm. Greetings, and they have a super flexible Scheduled, mm -hmm. but you have to go out to the stores and sort greeting cards. But, um, you know, so between the two of us, we could work out a schedule where the kids were watched when they're young. Yeah. Now that they're all older, we don't need that as much, but they still go visit mm -hmm. grandma on the mm -hmm. days that I work. You know, I tell them they need to get out of the house and they, <laughs> and they go and they want to go eat her cookies. So <laughs> nice. So they still go, even though they're, you know, ninth and 10th grade, yeah. Um, yeah. they'll still go. Um, and that's a great way to build that relationship. Wow. Like spending time with Gammy, grandma, Gammy, we call her Gammy. Gammy. Um, so it, it's, you know, as they get older, maybe she's not teaching them or whatever, but you have that relationship built and then that's just super special and they'll have that memory forever and it'll be, you know, it's like what my kids do with, with my mom. They do some things too, and it's just that special, special time, time together. together. Yeah, yeah. And, and my my dad has a a hobby workshop where he does woodworking, and the kids have gotten because of going to their house, they've they've gotten to build some stuff with their yeah. pappy. Yeah. So yeah. some a nice Abram came home with a nice nightstand. Cool. Both their names are engraved in it. And oh, have it forever now. That's so. awesome. That's awesome. So yeah, look for opportunities like that too. If there's a, a mentor around or if um, a, a retired gentleman, retired lady, neighbors, someone like that who um, just kind of wants to pour into young ones, um, give them skills. I mean, so many of the hands-on skills are being lost these days and um, anything like that. Any, you know, working on a car or any of those types of things. Um, Think out of the box, I guess is what we're trying to get you to, to think about today is just think differently. It doesn't have to look like school. It doesn't have to be this set, rigid plan. And it can be very flexible. And as far as covering the law, that's very flexible. I've talked about that in other videos too, about um, you're not doing everything every year. You know, do the things that are popping up in front of you. Like, it's 4th of July, guess what? We're gonna, you know, learn a little bit about that. and. 
Uh, so yeah, look at your look at your opportunities in front of you and look in the community around you. I'm sure there's other people in the same boat as you and you can talk to them about maybe working out a plan or what is it that you do and swapping ideas and things like that. So when you hit, so you were part-time working at home a little bit and then of course COVID happened and that all shut down. Everyone went home full-time. Yeah. Well, yeah, everyone was working from home. Yeah. The entire time. So that that actually worked out well. Well, like our school was not disrupted at all. I didn't have to go in the office anymore. Yeah. Um, but we could continue our schooling at home, and I was there. And you were still part time. And then, when did you start full time again? It's been a year and a half. I went back full time. Um, Abram is my youngest. What he was? He just finished. So he was in seventh grade. And there was an opportunity at work, but they required me to go back full time. Mm-hmm. And. You know, we talked to the kids about it, and my youngest said, Mom, I don't need you anymore. <laughs> okay, <I'm> then. Like, <laughs> I guess you do. The I know you do. <laughs> Not as much anymore. <laughs> so, so yeah, I went back full-time a year and a half ago. Um, only now required to go in the office one day a week. Wow, that's nice. So, Grandma sees them one day a week now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still happening. But it, yes, and some weeks it doesn't happen because the kids are 14 and older and working summer jobs. But yeah. um, So, things are changing. But, um, but no, I was also brainstorming about like other people that I know. I know of a family, um, and they're, they homeschool, and the mom works for their church. So she's ah, able to bring mm-hmm. the kids to her, to the church. They're comfortable there. They know mm-hmm. the place. Then they do the schoolwork there. Um, like I mentioned, the flexibility of the mm-hmm. job that my mother has to help mm-hmm. me. Um, look for online jobs. You know, if you're like, I need to work, but I don't know where what to go. To you know, maybe there's home care mm-hmm. stuff that mm-hmm. you can get into or, mm-hmm. you know, or... Or a consistent, even if it's a retail, say, I need a consistent hour. Like, Mm -hmm. I can give you Monday and Tuesday mornings, Mm -hmm. you know, 6 to 12 or something. Mm -hmm. And then that's what I can offer you. And if you're willing to work with me, great. Um, Well, everybody's looking for help. Yeah. Everyone's out there hiring, right? And there's more remote jobs, too. Like, Uh so if you Uh can find a quiet spot in your house and work remotely for a few hours a day, you know, there's, there's... Look for those types of opportunities. Yeah. I know a lot of moms who get up. They'll get up early, you know, work at 5 to 7 or whatever till the kids wake up. And then that's it. Or others that work during nap time. If your kid takes really good naps in the afternoon and you can get that quiet time. But with all of that, it is really important to set a schedule um, so the kids know what to expect at those certain times. So you had your schedule. You had certain days you were leaving the house. They had to leave at this time. And the night before, you knew you had to get your crate ready and you're ready. So it's that kids need that schedule when they're young. Um, you know, it's kind of the boundary is like a safety net for them. Like they, it they makes know what's them, going on. Yes, they know what to expect. They're not taken by surprise. And some kids really don't take surprises well. <laughs> I have a few. I know what that's like. So um, it's always good to prepare your kids and give them some kind of regularity so they know what's coming next. Um, but yeah, like like Tanil was saying, it's important to be to be ready to change. Like it changed for them over the years. It was very different at times, and it's so funny because it's been years ago now. I mean. You know, I I barely remember having... I do remember having Ezra when he was a baby, but I barely, barely remember that. Like, So you're like, oh, yeah, I did do that thing. So it's not like you have to think, like, everyone who helps you is going to remember for the rest of their life how they helped you. you. And they're going to be... Yeah. Now you have to pay me back for all this. I don't... You know, whatever. It is what it is. You know, you help, and it's good. And um, so don't be afraid to ask for help. And don't be afraid to change things up. Um just as, as you get through that change, set up your routine so everyone knows what the routine will be, you know, with that. The other thing that popped into my head is um, use the entire year. You only have to That's get true. 180 days in, but you can start July 1st. So maybe you don't work over the summer, but you do seasonal jobs around Christmas mm-hmm. time. So do summer homeschooling and then take a few weeks off mm-hmm. around Christmas so you can go out and work and help your mm-hmm. family. Mm-hmm earn the money and then go back to you know being home yeah there's 
so many different ways to do it. But, yeah, that's true. But if you use 365 days to get 180 in, use it. They, it's there for you. Yeah. So you yeah. don't have to fit into the public school calendar. calendar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Or seasonal like now. Like if you do greenhouse work or grow things, you do a little farm stand, you know, whatever, like selling produce, fresh produce. Everyone's looking for good local fresh produce now. So... I mean, maybe you have a little plot of land where you have space to do that. And that is something you can get your kids involved oh, yeah, with yeah. and train. There's plenty of information out there on how to get that stuff started and books and the whole thing. We had some, what was that book I was trying to remember yesterday? Backyard Homestead, Homestead or Backyard Farming or I don't know, something like that. It's a whole book. I told you how to turn your quarter of an acre into this self-sufficient farm thing with goats and everything. So <laughs> that is great learning stuff. We were at... Um, we were at Virginia's convention a few weeks ago, and they had a guy there who talked about that, like how to raise goats and all the, mm -hmm. like do the farm. It was packed. That room oh, was packed. packed. Like it is the hot topic. So the information is out there for you if you're interested in that and go on that route too. So yeah. good things. So yeah, I mean, something will work for your family. You just have to, you know, f find the job that fits, yeah. fit for you and, um, find you know willing family or friends who can who can help fill in some of those you know times where you do need child care but but working in homeschooling is viable doable yeah mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. a, pop, a thought just popped into my head so if you have a friend who's in the same boat as you you go to the same employer and say hey we'll cover this position for you the two of us so you know and then you swap hours watching each other's kids and then you both get to work a little part-time there you go <laughs> it solves the employer's issue yeah. and gives you guys some extra cash or whatever so so um yeah so hopefully this was helpful to you gives you some you know like brainstorming ideas and just get the thoughts rolling around in your head but if anyone out there it also works from home or, or is just working while homeschooling please comment with any um, comments or help or anywhere to point people that might be helpful where they can get more ideas and stuff but um, it is totally doable you can homeschool and you can work and uh, there are others out there uh, don't be afraid to ask and, and around and, and get ideas from other people um, is definitely something you can do. And Tanil is proof. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for coming on, yes. Tanil. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Happy 4th of July. Yay, Independence Day. Go shoot some fireworks. Okay. <laughs> Bye.